The role of the costume designer is not only to dress the actor, but also to help define the character the actor plays. They help paint each frame of the film, and their work can either contribute or distract from the art the audience is experiencing. A successful costume must be incorporated by the story and be woven seamlessly into the narrative and visual tapestry of the movie. When you're adapting a superhero story into a movie, it's even harder due to the expectations of the fans. Here is Screen Rant's list of 10 superhero costume designs that could have ruined the movie. Make sure to give us a thumbs up when we talk about your favorite superhero. Hugh Jackman as Wolverine. Director Brian Singer wanted to make sure his first X-Men venture was authentic to the comic books, starting with the storyline all the way down to the costumes. His original idea for Hugh Jackman's Wolverine costume was the yellow spandex we've grown accustomed to in the comics. He wasn't the only one that was going to wear their outfits in the comics. The entire team was going to look like their original designs. Singer ultimately decided that the costumes were too cartoonish, and chose to go with the sleek black costumes we saw in the movie. Anthony Mackie as the Falcon. Anthony Mackie flew into 2014's Captain America The Winter Soldier as the Falcon, and audiences loved him immediately. His character, Sam Wilson, was an expert aviator due to his time as a military pararescue before he joined the Avengers team, so he fit well into his superhero outfit. The outfit you see in the films looks like a Falcon, but before the filmmakers settled on those wings, they had another variation. The prototype design looked more like an airliner with jet engines on either side. Maybe they would have renamed him The Aviator. Keep some pressure on that, sweetheart. Call me? Anne Hathaway as Catwoman. Catwoman had numerous concepts drawn for her role in The Dark Knight Rises, in and out of superhero costume. From her heels to her maid outfit, they all seem to have changes, but none more than her Catwoman outfit. The artist must have researched Tim Burton's Batman Returns, because her original costume had a much stronger resemblance to that film, and didn't fit well in this Batman series. Anne Hathaway looked great in all of her final costumes, and we probably couldn't find much reason to complain about her in any outfit. I don't know, what do you think? What's a good sidekick name? Chris O'Donnell as Robin. Tim Burton directed the first two Batman films, and was ready to helm the third installment, Batman Forever, but the studio had a different agenda. Burton's last installment was too dark for the studio, and they wanted to keep Batman Forever family-friendly. The costume we saw Chris O'Donnell wear was not the costume Burton had in mind for his Robin. That was prepared for Marlon Wayans. Burton's costume had a mask that looked like the Scarlet Witch's mask, and check out the hair! We have got company. Jared Leto as the Joker. It seems that you can't mention the film Suicide Squad without someone defending it or complaining about it. No matter what your opinion is, you can see that the concept art of Jared Leto's Joker was originally bland. Initially, he had no tattoos on his face and no metal teeth, and his costume was a simple duster along with a dress shirt and a bow tie. The filmmakers decided to make Leto's character crazier and took his outfit and makeup to the next level. Interested in Harley Quinn's costume changes? Stick around and we'll show you. Superhero landing! Ryan Reynolds as Deadpool. When you see Ryan Reynolds in 2016's Deadpool, it's hard to believe that the team behind that film was thinking of a different costume than the one we saw in the film. His final costume was perfect. His eyes showed emotion and he wore his signature belt buckle. The Merc with a Mouth was originally going to wear a hockey mask instead of his signature mask and had straps holding the costume together. This was a mediocre concept that everyone should be glad they decided against. And we're sure Deadpool spoke out against it too. What have you got? Jackie Earl Haley as Rorschach. Rorschach is a badass, period. Jackie Earl Haley performed Rorschach perfectly from his uncompromising code, ability to solve mysteries, and his love for killing bad guys. Luckily, his original costume was scrapped or we would have been too distracted to enjoy his performance. The concept art of his original costume featured bell bottoms. That's right, bell bottoms on the man that makes a stop to the bathroom during a prison escape to handle a little problem. That does it! Oh, Canada! Stefan Kapasik as Colossus. It's hard to say who was the actor behind the character Colossus in the 2016 R-rated superhero film Deadpool. It took five different actors to actually create the CGI version of this character, with Stefan Kapasik performing the voice. Colossus was a big mutant made of organic steel, but despite being made of steel and CGI, he had great expressions. The original costume concepts for this character were hidden behind a hood. It's a lot more fun to see his expressions during battle and when listening to Deadpool's loving commentary. <laughs> Tobey Maguire as Spider-Man. When Sam Raimi started pre-production on 2002's Spider-Man, he hired one of the greatest comic book artists of all time to work on costume concepts, Alex Ross. Ross's drawings were not aligned with Raimi's vision. 
For starters, the costume was much darker, which would have brought a bleaker tone to the film. Still, one of the biggest problems with his work was Spider-Man's eyes. They were dome-shaped and extruded from the front of his costume. This concept might have worked for a real spider, but not for the heroic Peter Parker. You got all dressed up for me? Oh, you know I'd do anything for you. Margot Robbie as Harley Quinn. There is no denying that Margot Robbie stole the show in 2016's Suicide Squad, hence why thousands of women dress as her for Halloween. Maybe they wouldn't have if they used the original concepts for Harley Quinn's costume. They originally wanted to have a tattoo of the Joker's face on her chest, and the word puddin' across her crotch. Her entire stomach would have been shown, and half her breast, too. If the filmmakers thought they were given a hard time about sexualizing Robbie in this film, Imagine how bad it would have been if they used these concept costumes. What do you think of our video? Did we skip over any costume designs that would have ruined the movie? Sound off in the comments below and be sure to subscribe to our channel for more fun videos. Don't forget to watch another awesome video from Screen Rant by picking one now. Thanks for watching.